the two things. One was the oil wells. Uh, I know a lot of people who have been capping their oil wells and waiting for America to come back into the picture again. Secondly, I wanted to ask you, as far as the Near East is concerned, what will happen if we no longer sell to Iran or Iraq? And what will happen if the Russians or other nations will get in there and take our place? Well, two things. Uh, in the case of Iran, we've sold them arms illegally. That's why the White House is drowning in scandal and shame today. We broke the law to sell them arms, and we're now about to move toward a war where we could be killed with our own arms. Wouldn't that be humiliating? It's a fundamental mistake. Second, we need a comprehensive policy for the region that will uh, end so much wrath against the American people. If there's anything we learn in Vietnam is that no matter how much military readiness you have, if somehow you do not have the favor of the people, you cannot win, which means that diplomacy and brains is a fact in war, not just missiles and bombs. You're not concerned about Russian presence in the Persian Gulf? And we... Indeed, it's already there. That's why we must have an international peace conference on the UN supervision because America and Russia are standing to get pulled into an east-west war over a north-south conflict unless we have a policy that's more realistic and more comprehensive for the region. We're in New York City with Reverend Jesse Jackson, and we'll be back in a moment. From Channel 2 News, this is Newsbreak. Good afternoon. Why aren't more blacks in front office jobs in pro sports? There's a big meeting today, and we'll hear live from Jesse Jackson and home run king Hank Aaron on our news at 4.30. The world-famous Kirov Ballet of the Soviet Union is touring Chicago, and we'll have reports. And we'll show you how some canny hot-weather operators are turning a quick buck at the beach. Channel 2 News starts with first edition at 4.30. Join us. Your boyfriend just called off the trip to Aruba. Your boss wants the report Monday. And your mother said she'd keep you company. Go home. Relax. Smooth on Estee Lauder's self-action tanning cream. In just a few hours, you'll have a tropical glow. So where'd you go? It must have been some weekend. And no one will ever know. Self-action tanning cream. Now at Marshall Fields. I bought a tough Ford F-150 pickup. Good-looking, well-made, even a high-tech anti-lock brake system. What a value. That Ford dealer saved me over $1,800 in options, including air conditioning, at no extra charge. Plus, I got a six-year, 60,000-mile warranty. And right now, you can get 3.9% financing or up to $600 cash back on select F-Series trucks. No wonder it's been the best-selling truck all these years. I sure got a lot for my money. Quality people, those Ford dealers. Quality products, too. This week at Dominic's, slice into the delicious savings on Homeland Hard Salami. A sandwich and salad lovers must, now just $1.69 a half pound. In the Country Fresh Produce Department, savor the savings on large size head lettuce, a natural health food and just 33 cents each. And Dominic's Country Fresh Produce Department yields even more savings on flavorful, crisp, fresh broccoli, just 39 cents a pound during Dominic's Country Fresh Produce Festival. Relax with an offer like no other. Free recliners at Wix Furniture. Buy this comfortable recliner for only $399.99 and get a second matching one free. Or get this beautiful wall saver. Just $499.99, the second one's free. Choose this triple back wall saver, two for the price of one, just $599.99. These luxurious wall savers are only $699.99 and the second one's free. Wix, surprisingly Wix. Reverend Jackson, I'm glad you mentioned the focus on education. I'm concerned as a college student that there is not enough financial aid available for college students, especially public college students. What is your feeling? What would be your stand as a campaign promise on that issue? There really must be a commitment to increase our investment in education and see education as a defense act, not as a social program to be thrown away. We should reduce the tuition costs of students so as to have more in college and increase the pay of teachers, because if the issue is competitiveness, 
education is the key, if the issue is productivity is the key, if it in fact is the quality of life. If you go to any state university in America for four years on full academic scholarship, it costs $25,000 or less. The same four years on a penitentiary scholarship cost between $120,000 and $160,000. We must choose education over incarceration. It just makes solid sense. Except that you now... Yeah. Hey, let's have another government program. Let's, uh, how'd our parents get through school without federal aid? It's, this, it's the government handout that made us soft, so M says your M opposition. Many of our parents didn't get through school, and that was the problem. And so the promise of America is to broaden the base of opportunity. When you consider the return on an investment in education, the return on an investment in teachers over and against missile systems that we do not use and are unnecessary, it's the morally correct thing to do, and it's cost-efficient. Reverend Jackson, do you believe that President Reagan is more involved in the Iran scandal than he'd admitted, he admitted? Oh, yes, I'm convinced that he is. In a real sense, if, uh, if you know, they, the Iranians were involved in the bombing in Lebanon. He pronounced them as terrorists. The Congress cut off relations and, all, and the president, all of that. And yet, if all of this activity took place in the White House, not in a hotel, in the White House where he lives. If all of this activity took place and he knew nothing about it, that's bad. <laughs> if it took place and he knew about it but forgot it conveniently, that's a little worse. <laughs> but if it took place and he forgot it absolutely, that's real dangerous. <laughs> real dangerous. That, that is not his present defense. His well, present defense, if I understand it, is that he did know what was going on, and he did not violate the law, and that this was merely an effort to encourage those who see the communist threat in Central America as real to privately, no public monies, to privately uh, encourage contributions towards... Clearly, the influence peddling was involved. Clearly, it was against the will of the American people. Clearly, it circumvented the U.S. Congress. And to that end, that's why we have these scandalous hearings going on now. If you believe he was so involved, what would you have, what would you have him happen now? What would you do? Well, Congress is using the proper procedure, the hearings. And based upon those hearings, uh, he will either be exonerated or there will be a, a movement toward impeachment. But that is a process. What he did was outside the law. The hearings that are now taking place are inside the law. All that we do know is that his friends, encouraged by his policy, invested in Iran in military equipment and broke the law, circumvented the Congress, and then sold arms to the countries in Central America and circumvented the law again. And now we find ourselves in war on two fronts, in Central America and in the Middle East, without the will of the, will of the American people or the consent of Congress. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Reverend Jackson, could you tell me how you feel about separation of church and government? Well, they should remain separated. I mean, that part of our Constitution is, is valid and, and it is sound. Of course, there is no threat of church and state coming together here so long as we live under a Constitution not under a, a religious writ. Whether one is a, a, a minister or a lawyer or a business person, a male or female, none of one's basic citizenship rights are given up in the process of running for public office. We should keep them separate. And we should also fight for checks and balances, executive, judicial, and legislative. Uh, Mr. Jackson, when you become president, what do you hope to do to provide better housing for the people throughout the country? I suppose the first thing we should do is to change the present tax law and to have investment in affordable housing. A big error of the last tax law was to remove the incentive for investment in affordable housing 
and it put it in the same category as skyboxes at a ballpark. Secondly, we ought to commit more money in building affordable housing because it deals with two problems at the same time. You look at three to five million homeless people. When you build homes for the homeless, you also provide jobs for the jobless. And that becomes your alternative to welfare and unemployment compensation. That then turns tax consumers into revenue generators, which reduces the deficit at the same time. So we can only do good economic and morally by building affordable housing. May I share with you a Newsweek uh, commentary article, May 18th, number 16. Now, by default, Jackson is at least temporarily the front-runner, and he'll have to brace himself for the questions front-runners now get about his past statements on race and world affairs, on sources of funding for his work, and even, as his aides have reportedly warned him in the past, about his private life. The condescending attitude of polls and press toward Jackson, that he could never win or even play a major role, may well be at an end. Have your aides warned you about your private life? Well, no. But we've discussed it in great detail because that is such a matter of discussion now, not in any specific sense as, as if it is a problem. Clearly, the role the press will now play in this campaign and future campaigns is of such that every T will be crossed, every I dotted. We must accept the weight of living in a fishbowl. You, 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 uh, that does not, uh, you have no misgiving about that. Have no misgiving about it whatsoever. My only concern is that the game be played by one set of rules and that the press faithfully execute its job by reporting to the American people as much as it knows about a given leader, but also to put the whole question of moral tone in perspective. One's uh, private life, private life is a source of moral concern. How one relates to death in South Africa is a moral matter. How one relates to killing in Central America is a moral matter. And we cannot reduce our morality to sexuality alone. We must deal with the whole gamut of issues that make for moral tone. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's okay if uh, reporters stand on, the, on a public sidewalk to see who may accompany you in and outside of a hotel or any other residents. That's, that, so that's, that's a judgment they must make, but it does not appear to be the highest and best use of their time. Uh, uh, for example, uh, there's been a lot of debate in the press about the role that it should play. And it's not my role to determine the limits or the uh, horizons of the press. That's a press judgment. Candidates cannot make that judgment. Legislators should not make that judgment. We just simply must accept the high and low side of a free press. I assume you think the adultery question is an uh, unfair or inappropriate question. Unless there's some probable cause. If, if one begins to focus on adultery and, and liquor and this and that, you could spindle a whole campaign off into the most... Uh, small parts of a person's life and miss what they have to offer in leadership. And there are some matters, it seems to me, that should be left to the conscience and family and God. Reverend Jackson, you just said an awful lot of campaign dialogue. Now could you please tell us what skeletons you have in your closet? <laughs> well, I, I do not have any skeletons in my closet. To, to, to Hard had. I don't have any such skeletons. I think that any others? My, my real point is that we submit to a rather vigorous interrogation and research about uh, our finances, our taxes, and our various stages of our life. And we're well written about it and, and very exposed. And uh, that's about really all that you really can do is to put your best foot forward. That's all that you really can do. And we'll be back in just a moment.
Judge Jackson, you've got dirty dentures. Objection. I just soak them. Soaking's not enough. That's why your dentures are dirtier than they should be. Brushing with denture cream cleans denture film much better. Look, when tested against Effident, denture cream denture toothpaste gets dentures much cleaner. Nearly twice as clean. So don't get caught with dirty dentures. Brush them clean with minty tasting denture cream or mouthwash fresh denture gel. Case closed. I just talked to him, and he said he would come on and do a live shot on the early show. We got 28 tapes in the show, plus about six live shots. Boy, it looks like that cold front's really going through here. Case 2-7. Let's get a wide shot of all the dancers. Stand by. Left. Left. Yeah. I'll be there about five seconds. Yeah. Got to do is call the federal government right away. Ready, eight, voiceover. Up effects one, Linda Q. Today in Chicago, these Turn to Channel 2's first edition. I was so nervous when my sister-in-law brought a new baby over. So I cleaned with Pine Sol Liquid. It disinfects and deodorizes. People can always tell when you've cleaned with Pine Sol. Pine Sol shows you really care about clean. Here's my new kitchen. Jane, is this Pine Sol in a pump? With Pine Sol in a pump, you can clean easier, disinfect easier, and deodorize easier. Pine Sol in a pump. <laughs> Imagine Pine Sol comes in a pump. People try all sorts of things to lose weight. At the Urban Woman, weight loss is physician monitored, often covered by insurance, with surgical options available. Phone 7262002, the newest member of the Urban Health Services family. Varicose veins mar the appearance and the health of both men and women. At the Center for Cosmetic Surgery, most insurance pays to have them removed. Phone 7262002, a member of the Urban Health Services family. I'm your fairy godmother, and tonight's the ball. Oh, you can't go like that. <gasps> Not tonight. Ah, an escort. Another night. New vanilla crispy bonbons, bite-sized scoops of creamy ice cream and a milk chocolate coating with a crispy crunch. I'll take care of these. Why don't you run along? Bonbons brand ice cream nuggets. Simply irresistible. May we see that again if you've joined us late. We are in the company of the Reverend Jesse Jackson in New York City. Here is the latest a telephone poll conducted by the New York Times following the departure of Gary Hart. Look at this. Um, guess who's leading the pack? Now, uh, Reverend Jackson, uh, his, his lead in the polls is usually accompanied by the well, but if, if there is... Show them the next poll. Here's a poll of people who, uh, including people who have not announced. Cuomo leads, and he says, I'm not running. Bradley is third, and he says, I'm not running. Uh, we, a nun says, I don't think so, but I'm here. Uh, and who else uh, up there has... Uh... So what do you think? Does this, what? Uh, I'd like to know, why do you keep running for presidency if you've never had an elective office before? Well, three basic reasons. One, if you meet the constitutional qualifications to run... And you choose to, you ought to, and I meet those qualifications. Secondly, if a leader can gain the trust of enough people and can build a consensus, then one ought to run. In our case, not only have we done that, we also have the capacity to win. Phil, may I make a point that's kind of independent of that? There's a lot of questions out here, Reverend Jackson. Right? One, of, one of my concerns is that on this quality of the campaign business, I go to about four high schools a week, even now, rural, suburban, elementary, at every level. And about 60% of our children have contemplated committing suicide. Almost all of them have had some dope experience. I know someone in their age group who has died. And a great part of this whole thrust must be to focus on and deal with the quality of life of our children. And, and the danger of putting a whole lot of focus on the personality, there's almost no time left in the paper or on the show to discuss how shall we deal with the plight of our children and our families. Well, uh, it's hard to argue that uh, a policy about South Africa, ad uh, general uh, views regarding foreign policy are uh, less important than a person's moral character. I, I don't want to be in that debate. I'd probably lose it if I suggested otherwise. 
Nevertheless, having said all this, uh, America obviously didn't think Gary Hart should have gone to Bimini. Well, I, I, now, now, I think that, I think it, that the uh, whole question... No, no, no. The issue of, of the moral character and the integrity... Is important. And the, and the intellectual capability of leadership is important. But on a range of important issues, how shall one deal with an area where 38 Americans were brought back home in boxes this past week? How shall one deal with an area next door to us? Very important. Where war drums are beating? How shall we deal Very with important. South Africa, which is impacting how the whole world sees us? And hey. so we have some obligation to fight to get a broad range of interests out there. What are your current relationships with uh, Arafat and Farrakhan? You said you were opening up dialogues with Jews. Well, you know, I have not seen Farrak Ar Arafat in about eight years. And when I did see him in the Middle East, it was to challenge him to engage in a mutual recognition policy toward Israel, support Israel's right to exist, even as he fought for his own right to exist. We cannot choose our relatives, only our friends. We cannot choose our enemies. But if we want to have peace, we must negotiate or confront our enemies in some measure. And so by meeting people who disagree with us, as well as those who agree with us, is the leadership thing to do. If our leaders have not met with our adversaries, how can they move us toward peace? In the case of, 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 of Farrakhan, uh, oh, we have not met, I suppose, in a couple of years now. But that issue is not sent to peace to our thrust into our responsibility. That He's issue not a is what? in this campaign. That issue is what? It's not, it's a, not a centerpiece. It, it, it's not a fact in our campaign, and he's not involved in but the campaign. But there are not a few Americans who want you to just say out loud that you are distancing yourself from this man's uh, apparent relentless effort to, uh, at the very least, convey the notion or the sentiment of anti-Semitism. Well, I decry anti-Semitism or racism all the time, everywhere. That matter has been addressed quite publicly quite thoroughly, in great detail, before the largest TV audience in American history, the Democratic Convention in 1984. Reverend Jackson, what responsibility do you feel that the clergy has, the clergy and or religious community has in activating the political awareness of their congregations or constituents? I just left a meeting with Cardinal O'Connor here in New York focusing on the plight of indigent people who are sick in their homes and need health care. We don't have insurance, for the most part, cannot afford hospitals. And so by focusing on the plight of the indigent and, and the health care workers and them not being able to make a livable wage and their families, it's a way of arousing people's sensitivity. But even those people who are hurt must fight back. You simply cannot rationalize the rendering. In 1985, 84, 85 million Americans who had the right to vote did not vote. They surrendered their franchise because they thought they did not make a difference. Part of our job is to convince people that even if you rejected from the end and born in the stable, you are somebody and do not surrender. Do get involved. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think that Gary Hart was uh, treated fairly by the media? Well, I don't want to deal with that judgment, only because Gary said of his own volition that there was some fault of judgment on his part. There's a raging debate in the media about the limits it should have gone to, and I choose to leave that debate to the media and to focus on other areas. If I deal with that, uh, I'll end up being a media analyst and judge, and that's not really my, my focus. Yeah. Reverend Jackson, would you accept a vice presidential slot? It's according to what my options were. If I were to run uh, a successful race and did not run, uh, the vice president's option would be a serious consideration because it would be such an honor to serve our nation at that level. Reverend Jackson, I have a question. In regards to the military, both my husband and I are in the Air Force. Okay, what do you plan on doing as far as the defense? Are you going to cut back on our salaries or what? What do you... Th oh. <laughs> Well, you know, really, the, the, quality, 
the quality of life for service people who put their lives on the line for us should be protected with good salaries and good insurance and good benefits once they're out of the service. That is what we must do. What's happening now is when we're building an MX missile and a B-1 bomber, it's unnecessary systems and excess that's bloating the budget. The idea of a, of a trillion dollar Star Wars project that has no definition, that's a misappropriation of money and values. And so we ought to pay service people and pay them better. You think that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you think Ronald Reagan would exercise potential to step down early before the end of his term to allow George Bush to have an edge in the next election? Well, the, the steps that he is on now are rather slippery, and George Bush is on those same steps. And so the, the hearings will determine just how gracefully or how quickly he may have to step down. At any rate, the, the collapse in foreign policy has done tremendous damage to this administration uh, at every level. When you, if you become president, what policies do you plan to initiate to support the government of Israel? Well, Israel's right to exist with security within internationally recognized boundaries ought to be supported. A homeland for Palestinian people likewise should be. They also deserve some place to stay because if they are forever nomads, if they never have a a place to live, then you're set up for eternal war. And then we should normalize ties with the Arab world. I think in some measure that's what Mr. Perez is saying, and, and Secretary of State Schultz is now saying that some form of international peace conference where we build up on Camp David, the best security for Israel is to reduce the wrath of its neighbors. When Mr. Carter was able to get Egypt to stop pointing guns toward Israel, that was the best defense for Israel. Reverend Jackson, the uh, Reagan administration has stated that the uh, National Security Council was not legally bound to the Boland Amendment because they are a member of the executive branch, which is supposed to carry out foreign policy. Do you agree with this position? Well, it's, that's just a technicality to circumvent the law. The fact of the matter is the executive branch of government ought to respect the legislative branch. Before we venture out toward these warlike maneuvers, whether in the Persian Gulf, or in Central America, we should touch base with the appropriate oversight committees in Congress, and that has not happened under this administration. It's, a, it's ex an expression of contempt for the Congress, and that's not, that does not make for good government. Sir. Uh, Reverend Jackson, can you please tell this matter once and for all? How do you expect the Jewish voters of the United States of America to vote for you unless you totally renounce Louis Farrakhan? Well, the fact of the matter is... <laughs> Our government must always be inclusive and expansive and not exclusive. And that what we must do in this broad array of people in this country is to make our own positions clear and not build our positions upon just who we renounce, but what we really represent. And it really is a mistake, for example, for example, if we keep making that a central issue, and, for example, do not put into focus the amount of arms Israel is selling to South Africa. That's also a critical issue. But we would make a mistake if we made arms sales to South Africa, which we disagree with, the centerpiece, or if we made some of Farrakhan's statement the centerpiece, I think it would not be a wise judgment. But you're still evading the question, will you or really, will you not renounce him? Yes or no? It the, appears to me that you won't renounce him. The, the Therefore, position, how, can, how can the Jewish voters trust you if you will not renounce an immoral man such as Farrakhan, who is um, an extreme anti-Semite? I've watched him constantly on cable TV. He has um, his own uh, show. And, uh, you know, the man is really, really a terrible bigot. Why won't you renounce him? Uh, Mr. Jackson, I respect you. I think you're a very moral man, yet you won't renounce this man. Why? I take the position that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that let he who is without sin throw the first rock. And that, uh, and that I, I am fundamental against capital punishment, people who have even murdered other people. When I look at the wide range of relationships, I must put people in some kind of perspective. But you also must take a position. Your, your position 
biblically supported, allows you really not to not to engage in any kind of agonizing. I am sure, for example, that you oh. would renounce... I, I am sure you would renounce the support of the Ku Klux Klan. Not necessarily. I would challenge them. Oh, I, I, can, I, 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 I renounce the activities, not the citizenship of, of, of its members. I do not endorse their acts of, of terror. After all, if we're going to deal biblically, for example, our mission is to... It's to even love enemies. A, to do what? To try to neutralize them or convert them. If we're going to deal constitutionally, there's no basis for, for renouncing people unless there's some legal basis for that. If, if we were going to begin to pick off individuals based upon our disagreement with given positions, there have been an awful lot of picking off and divisiveness going on. And we'll be back in just a moment. I love it at dawn. The whole world seems fresh and brand new again. As light and clear now as the juice of a fresh cut pineapple. That's today's Dole 100% pure pineapple juice. Pineapple orange and pineapple grapefruit too. All with a brand new taste of hearing. And the help of both men and women. At the Center for Cosmetic Surgery, most insurance pays to have them removed. Phone 726-2002. A member of the Urban Health Services family. Well, it's almost noon at Church's Fried Chicken. Where the deals are hot at Church's Fried Chicken. Throw away the brown bag, the lunch pail too. Church's all day lunch deals are here for you. Shoebox. Now get Church's 99 cent lunch snack with one big piece of chicken and fries. Or the $1.59 lunch combo with two big pieces and fries. They're two hot deals served all day long at Church's where you always get more of a good thing. Yeah, all day. I'm pleased to recognize in the, our audience uh, the presence of Santita Jackson, uh, Reverend Jackson, 17-year-old. Would you kindly stand? No, oldest daughter. Oh, you're old, 23. You have my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you're flattered or not. I know there's coming a day when you'll want that, uh, yeah, when you'll yeah. want those years back. I mean, as, as to the last point, uh, clearly we should run for the office we feel we can best serve in. If, if you can live with Ronald Reagan for eight years. Give me a chance. <laughs> Service provided and promotional fees paid by the following. At Volvo, we've been safety testing our cars almost as long as we've been building them. Because we want to make sure our customers keep coming back. True Value's own Harvard brand three-piece cutlery set featuring hardwood handles and stain-free steel blades is available exclusively at True Value hardware stores. The Drake offers an exciting weekend in New York at a special price. The only Swiss hotel on Park Avenue. For reservations, call 800-DRAKE-NEW-YORK or 212-421-0900. Uh, I'd like to know how he feels about a woman riding on the ticket. Would you, have, would you select a woman for your ticket? Absolutely. 